My name is Usha, and I say nowadays. Uh, uh, I have been involved with education for the last, uh, I was just counting, I think 28 years. Uh, but as I say that, I also uh, here wanted to say that I think it was in 1973 or something, I came to Kishore Bharti as a young girl, uh, very much excited uh, after hearing the talk and met Professor Anil Sadgopal also at that time. So, but then afterwards I got involved with very, very different issues of technology and development. But last uh, so many years I've been involved with education. And uh, like Vivek also said, uh, uh, work with an organization, um, become involved with an organization called Jodo Gyan, which is also um, not, uh, which does not take any funding and is uh, economically independent and uh, uh, um, and self-reliant in that sense. So uh, everything brings its own the difficulties and problems. This also brings. And uh, so, uh, and the focus has been on uh, uh, mathematics and science. Uh, and we work with uh, pri uh, private schools, also with some governments, and currently involved in uh, Kerala, Meghalaya, and Sikkim. So, uh, uh, Nagarjuna had raised this question about what do you think, what are the reasons, I think, what went wrong or what is the problems with uh, education, both uh, the uh, government, uh, government introduced of standard education, also with alternate education. I think that's a question which certainly set me thinking about and so maybe just to share a few of the uh, reflections on it. I didn't have too much time to really think because this is a question which always is at the back of our minds. As we work at the ground, we try to do something, but we are also thinking about okay, what what is it that went, uh, you know, that what didn't go as we all expected. I mean, so I don't know whether we say wrong. Um, one thing is, is we try to change curriculums, we try to change textbooks, we try to change resource materials, we try to change many, many things. Um, but we can say that finally, the heart of the education process, that is what happens in the classroom, has not very uh, fundamentally changed. Some small changes. So if this is a reality uh, which we could discuss, what could be the reason? And as I was coming here, thinking about it, one could be the fact that, I mean, reflecting on my own experience, I'm saying that maybe one of the factors is that we underestimated the uh, power of uh, existing mental models that people have about education. There are images, mental models, belief systems, which people, all participants have. It includes teachers, and I would say in brackets, parents, uh, and uh, uh, policy makers, very much so, and also administrators along with that. So there are like two parts, teachers and parents on one side, and policy makers and administrators on the other side. What is the images and what are the ideas, mental models they have about education? That this becomes a very important factor to take into consideration is something I think I can say one underestimated. Was not even aware to begin with, and later thought that it can be got over by getting into a dialogue, getting into a discussion with them. And uh, that I think is a major issue, and uh, is something which we can think together and find some kind of a way out. Might be very, very useful. That how uh, how how does one deal with that? Because it's very obvious that almost any kind of an innovation, any kind of a new way of teaching in which we want to bring into the classroom, because finally what happens in the classroom is, is a very, very crucial part of what happens in education. So how does how does one communicate and how enter into a really in a dialogue with all the other participants who do have a very different idea about what happened, what are many of the things which we try to do. Uh, for example, if we think of having that 
we need to build up a culture of uh, you know building classroom as a community where there is sharing where there is group work where there is a thing uh, but for very many people that goes very much against their idea of learning as an individual process no? it's an individual child which is learning and how can this go again I mean, how can this fit? fit uh, these two, they uh, contradict each other. The whole idea of the whole culture for so long has been individual based. That each child gets marks, each child gets a grade mark, they'll take it home. But at the same time, we know that we do need to have assessment. How do we overcome this problem? I think this, that this is a major problem is something I think, at least certainly one underestimated because one thought, so, and that is not a question of a logical discussion. There are also major kind of, I would say, you know, ideological mental and mental models support it. So, because there are many children who would say that, no, competition is good. And because it's so much, there's so much part of it. Although it is one of the strange things, the whole society we know, nobody ever works alone. Every day we work in teams. Every day we work together. But in the school system, each child is seen separately. Not, it's not seen separately, but is also expected to work separately, do things separately, and chupake rakho, nahi dikhana, all these are the kind of things which happen so commonly. So where is the uh, educating children to be members of teams, to work together? So, if, and if you go and try to bring in that kind of a change into any classroom, it is not whether you do it nicely in a place and you show one also has to deal with all these mental models which people have about what is expected. Or to take another example is that we've tried, I think, uh, with uh, multi-age, multi-level, multi-grade, uh, you know, uh, which is non-graded kind of classrooms. You know, when you try to have multi-age, multi-level, non-graded classrooms, it, uh, you can do that, but same way you again face a lot of ideas which people have about how a classroom should be. And or if you take a good, we have talked about uh, everywhere, I think many of us have uh, seen or worked on at least some about having, about emergent literacy. But how do you uh, you know, it's very difficult to think about how can children learn to read and write without being taught alphabets. Or something which we have been very close, how can children write numbers without place, uh, understanding place value? How can they uh, add, add and sub, uh, you know, subtract in a context without being first taught addition and subtraction? The idea that you need to learn addition subtraction and go and apply it, that's such a strong mental, you know, ID model in the mind that that is not, and if you want to say that's not the way you, you know, a real learning can take place and one can, even if one is able to show it takes time. So there are these, I think, underestimation of the existing kind of ideas which are there in many different participants. I think this could be one of the reasons why we did not, we could not achieve many of the things we wanted to do. Um, because I know all of us are people who have worked <laughs> very long hours, been you know, fully everything, it's not every year. We don't turn in, uh, we leave any stone unturned, we try to do that. Uh, so, uh, I think there was another aspect also which is going to be important, especially most many of us are involved with uh, science and uh, mathematics, especially science. And somewhere, I think we did not consider uh, the importance of the evolutionary of evolutionary uh, nature of concept development. See, because many of us learned a concept through definitions, no? or at maximum there were some activities done, and very often we just thought, okay, we do an activity and teach the concept. But what we talk about evolution is also equally applicable for all these concepts, all the scientific concepts. Do we understand, start with energy and try to explain it? Or do we start with a felt, 
the meanings which can be there and each one of those concepts needs a lot of relearning for us to be able to do to explore and to do that i think there was a lot of underestimation i would say involved in each of them and this is not something one in i mean it takes my experience is it takes about three minimum of three years to work on one concept because the first time you try it out, you see the thing, second time it goes better, and the third year only, you know, okay, this is something which one can share. So we really need a lot of people to be working on it, and maybe we haven't been able to create that kind of a network where we can do that kind of a thing, maybe. And maybe that didn't develop because we underestimated the, uh, the work which is involved when you, un uh, you know, understand it, when you've learned it at some level. Because it's not a question of simplifying it for a child. It's as if in the life of the child, the child actually reiterates the historical development of that concept. Or it could be. I think uh, these are uh, two aspects. And other thing is the fact that very often we go and we think that there are material, uh, okay, material aspects which are uh, determining. But apart from that, there are also what can ideological or larger kind of, an, I would say, emotional aspects, which also affect the way people will come and become part of what we are trying to do. Uh, yeah, I think that is a larger kind of a question, even though in a material sense what one is saying is better. I think this is the third kind of an aspect. But at this moment, many people uh, have talked about uh, uh, NEP. And, uh, NEP, one of the very clear things which is coming out of NEP as the, two, the mission which they have set up. The mission for foundational numeracy and literacy. And that is the, that's the mission mode which is going. Other things are there, but foundational numeracy and literacy are going, are going in a mission mode and going into each and everything. When you are talking about foundational numeracy is going into in, you know, the pre-primary, primary kind of a thing. And what is happening is is very, uh, I think, something which we need to be, we can break up. Uh, if you look at the Nippon document, again, as somebody said about NEP, you can do a large document. It's got a split personality, that, that document. The first part has got uh, many things which, all the things which you would like, many things which many of us have written about to me. Has, is reflected in the first part. But the operative part is the second the second part about how the assessment, how the monitoring, how the thing. And if you look at these two things, there is a big, uh, big, big, big contradiction. And uh, the important thing is how did the idea of foundational numeracy and literacy come about? Because all over the world, many educationists in our country uh, uh, Vinita Kaur is my person who immediately remember, have been talking about the need for having foundational, the foundational years. It was not foundational numeracy and literacy, it was the importance of foundational years. And which has a very theoretical basis. And that, whether you go by Piaget or by Vygotsky, it is like you're talking about seven years. Huh? Seven years and there's a reason, and a theoretical reason why you're talking it is foundational years. Now, NEP made it to eight years, and now Nippon has made it to nine years. Now, there is no reason given anywhere. But one can assume many reasons. Is it because the testing could be done? At two, it's difficult to do. For, I, I don't want to say anything, we could discuss it. And what it is happening, I think, uh, is something because education is getting bureaucratized, but when the education of young children, and although new, they talk about three years to nine years, it's basically class one and two, three, one, two, and three. Now six years to nine years. So when those children are the focus of it, and that is the time when truly the foundation has to be built up. No? If at that time, the kind of policies which are completely very much prioritized, and the whole idea of competency-based, Competency-based education is a tantalizing word because, by definition, it brings in knowledge and uh, uh, you know, so called skills together. But what is the framework in which knowledge itself is seeing it with, with the people who are promoting competency? 
their idea of knowledge is the old idea of knowledge where you just learn the definitions or you, you get what you can try to do. Because it comes, uh, you know, whether you look at it from Skinner onwards, the whole idea is denying the existence of mind. You know, Ryle and others are talking about know-how and know-why and because then it can be tested. So this whole idea is coming from a but then there is you completely deny something called mind. If you can do something, you know it. But is that how it is? What is a concept? When we're talking about science, is that a what is a concept and how does a child learn? If child can do this, this, and this, and this, and this, does the child know the concept? See, this is a this is a major large question. What is happening across the world is the fact that Research results are being, uh, you know, inappropriately used in, in interventions in education. I think the, even the common core is a good example of that. Because you will say, oh, when we go to schools and they say, you're talking about counting on, they say, yes, 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 that is there, there also. You talk about splitting numbers, importance, oh, that is there. Everything is fragmented and taught separately. And what is, what is a concept? Is it too possible to do that? I think these are some of the questions which are there and which is not, we don't have too much time because we are going to have a generation coming over, the teacher is helpless. She's standing there even if she wants to teach because what she needs to do, what are the unit tests, what are all the things are being determined in an idea of education which is so, in a fragmented idea of knowledge. At least I would say so. So I think, um, of course, there have been. There are still a lot of things to do, but I. Uh, but this particular thing of foundation, and Nikun, I think has put more questions for us to deal with. I would say, listen, thank you. Okay, 